All right, guys, coming in. Ah! Just kidding. <laughs> About a year ago in this spot, Winston and I met up on a snow day to play with a waterproof drone called the Deep Six. <laughs> that is the coolest thing ever. We had so much fun playing with it, but by the time that the weather thawed out so that we could test the drone on open water, there was already a new version on the way. I've now got that drone in hand, the Deep Six V2, and it is unbelievably fun. I actually went and picked this up in Chicago from the Deep Designs guys. Adam told me all about the build, so let's catch up with them in Chicago and see what this build is all about. What was the inspiration for doing a waterproof drone? So I think this largely started because I didn't think it was even possible. And I have a lake house in Holland, Michigan, and okay. it's pretty close to the water. So we're on the boat, wave runner, doing the sorts of beach activities. So I want to film that and I want to get in there. So I had to come up with a way to do it. It's insane actually to think about how many things worked and then didn't work, yeah. things you think work, but actually don't over time. So it's like, how do you make oh, okay. a system that works all the time reliably? So you made Deep Six version one. What have you learned from Deep Six one that we're kind of looking at here for Deep Six two? The first version I felt was good enough. The second version is kind of just an extension of it. Anything that didn't work before now works and is easier. Awesome. I have not yet seen the drone, so we're gonna look at it together. This is it. Tell me about it. What do we got here? Well, everything's a project in motion, essentially. Yeah. Everything's always improving. Right. So this is just the best that we have currently. I had some issues with the version one where the components were able to kind of slide around in their mountings. Okay. Everything's now really secure and doesn't wiggle as much. The back has this cool cage that you can lock on from the sides and it'll fit anything that you want to throw in there. How's the camera kept safe? Because I know that there's been issues with like water getting into the housing of the camera and stuff. So the camera is taken apart as much as you can, put thermal silicone in there, and then okay. put it all back together. Okay, okay. nice, <laughs> awesome. So these are different battery straps. The straps were a huge part of figuring out version two. Okay. These are quick straps of some kind. Buckles. Yeah, yeah like, like buckle rubber straps. <laughs> so those make battery changes with the float system insanely easier. And they're a little stretchy? Yeah, they're stretchy. Okay, you want to crank nice. these down as much as you can really pull. Okay. Dang, that is cranked on. Yep. I love it. Well, so you've got an extra little 3D printed piece that's yeah. just got different size this slats is, in it. This is printed from carbon polycarbonate, so it should okay. fail. So now you're putting this reusable zip tie? Yeah, and then depending on your GoPro angle, you can shift where the okay. float goes on here. Put it through, push till it clicks a few times, do it again, and there you go. This is still just a normal drone, yes. right? It's not- This is a full featured- Just limited to way. being in the water, but it's also a relatively durable frame. It's got all of the components that you would normally want. It's just got the added benefit of being, being super be waterproof. waterproof. And I think you said in a message that it's even better thermally controlled than without the waterproofing. I'd build a quad, fly it for a few days or whatever, keep track of the temperature, and then waterproof it, and yep. then fly it again and compare yep. directly. And it looked better, if anything. It seemed like the added thermal mass of the waterproofing enabled it to spread out more and escape more efficiently than stock. So like I'm buying three of these because I know that we can use them in all conditions. They're still gonna be thermally controlled. It's gonna be a great platform. I wanna fly through that water fountain really bad and in the water and all that stuff. Thank you so much for showing me. I'm so excited. <laughs> for sure. Let's do it. First flight is going straight to the water. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, and like I like how it kind of like self writes now. Mm -hmm, it does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does not care at all. Nope. Just give it like a. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we're gonna have way too much fun of this. Ten out of ten. Okay, so turtle mode. On submerging. <laughs> it like wiggles and then goes. <laughs> That's what I do. I'm like, I'm <laughs> just like <laughs> rocking <laughs> it back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so you said that there's some things that we got to do when we're done flying. Right. To get the water Anytime out of Anytime you hit the water, you yeah. want to get the water out of the motors. Otherwise, the water will leak into the bearings. It'll mix with the grease, then it'll run out, and then your bearings will get icky. If you can, run a full pack just 
Oh, okay. Pushing it. Get yeah, it. just do that as best you can at least. But ideally, give it a full battery of just full beans and kind of get it. Not touching water. Not touching water. Got and if you're going salt water, yep. rinse it with fresh and then do that. Because salt water will corrode if you leave it over time. Even worse. We ended up running out of time on this day and had to come back a couple days later because I was actually on my way to a shoot. So we left the drones with them and came back on a different day to keep playing with the drones in the fountain. So I haven't flown this with goggles yet. So here we go. I'm going right for the fountain. I'm not even messing around. I'm going straight in. Ah, ah. I'm diving through the water fountain. <laughs> that is such a weird experience. Here, I'm following you. You go through the fountain a few times. <laughs> you just disappeared. Oh, you got up. launched. Got launched up. That you was disappeared. Awesome. I love not being afraid of the water. It's such a just different experience. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go right through the middle at the bottom here. <laughs> I'm gonna go through it really low. <laughs> I saw you get taken up. <laughs> go straight into the bottom of it from here. <laughs> I'm just gonna stay at the bottom and watch it happen. Okay. Just keep hitting it. I'm All just right. hovering in there. Right. Going, right you. <laughs> 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 Going in nice and slow right over top of you. <laughs> I can't believe you guys haven't done this before. No, dude. Dude, this is a... I mean, I've gone through fountains, but nothing this powerful. You know? Yeah, it's like, pretty. It's pretty like juicy. Yeah. I know. He's coming out sideways. Like Look, he's upside down already. Yeah. So have we explored all the possibilities? Do we know everything that this drone can do? Absolutely not. So far, all we've done is had a little bit of fun with it. However, I can't wait to get this to places where I can take advantage of the waterproofing. I wanna get out and fly some waterfalls. I wanna shoot some water sports. I wanna figure out cool transitions that we can do between water like Blaster did. He did such an amazing job with that video. I can't help but be inspired to try some of the same things too. Definitely go check out Blaster's video in the description below. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the Deep Six and are excited to see See what can come next. Thanks for subscribing and commenting and liking and all of that stuff. We'll see you on the next one. Stay flying. All right, today I'm gonna to teach you how to hand launch your drone. First, you wanna make sure you're in rate mode. Hold it where you're not gonna to touch the props. Arm it, and then you gotta get your hand on the throttle and get control before it hits the water. Uh, cut, 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 cut. Okay guys, sometimes you have to land in really precarious places so it's worth practicing once in a while just to make sure that you can kind of land the drone in a really tricky spot. So just bring it in nice and slow, make sure you got the center of gravity over it and then disarm. Ah! Nice. Dude, what? Get back here! <laughs>